And welcome to Fantastic Fungi Reimagined Life Music Events. I'm Marcina Hale from Reconsider. And tonight we have a very special guest from Rising Appalachia, which is Leah Song, is going to be joining us. Leah. And this is an opportunity for us to take different artists that have been giving their time and energy in song to an album of Reimagine, which is. Uh, inspired by both the film Fantastic Fungi and the mycelial world. And Leah, you got a chance to see the movie lately, right? I did. We had a screening of it down here where I've been residing for the last uh, eight months in central Highland, Costa Rica. And we did a screening of the film, which was really, really beautiful to see it on a big screen and, and to kind of have a, a crew of radical plant people around to analyze it all. <laughs> That's amazing. So did you watch it outside or inside? It was a we kind of watched it honestly in like a half half. It was um mm. you know, half of the buildings here are usually exposed. So we were we were tucked in into a rainstorm, but it's an it's an open space. Like the owls can fly through and the hummingbirds can fly through and oh, it's beautiful. And you actually came into joining the album before you even saw the film. But there's yeah. a certain person that kind of brought you into this uh, album, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that we've been, our music has been both inspired by and uplifted by the kind of radical rewilding community for many, many, many years. So it feels mm -hmm. uh, par and parcel. Yeah. And uh, the song that you uh, actually brought to the album was an Appalachian folk a song is that right? There's a couple of our songs on there. You have to tell me which one you're referring to. Well, actually, it's the uh, "I Believe in Being Ready," which is one right. of my favorite songs. Yeah, yeah, that is an old traditional um, kind of like Southern Appalachian gospel song that mm -hmm. we revisited and reworked to uh, really feel like it tells them more of a story of contemporary culture and um and then represented it to the world so it's got its roots in southern appalachian folklore and then i play a big irish drum on that one and um like most of the folk music that we work with we we ad adapt and adopt it to mm -hmm. kind of tell the story of of where we are now and it's interesting that it's coming out like for me right now when that song plays you know, and being in, in this time of COVID in this world that we're in right now, it, it plays very differently for me than when I first heard it. I know. Isn't when, that? Yeah. yeah. When COVID first hit, we had so many people write us and say, you know, these songs are taking really different meanings, which mm -hmm. is an honor and also kind of terrifying that we made apocalyptic music, you know, <laughs> accidentally it's a little doomsday -y, and we've got a lot of those songs but you know that's folk music for you well you could think of also it's more like like transformational you know yeah. it's almost like this this feeling like the, what do you the feeling sort of i was thinking about when i was so connected with it is what am i ready for mm, nice i like and that i have a really interesting feeling for that like it's there is something i'm ready for. i'm ready for a change totally yeah. totally Totally. We have several in that department of just like moving in the hard work of change making, you know, and that it can be uncomfortable. Yeah. And, you know, for us doing the album uh, and even the name Reimagine was about being able to go through that transformative process. You know, Reimagine. And one of the things we always talked about is how important songs are and how important the arts are. And uh, could you tell me a little bit like what you're connections with that and your feelings about that are during this time in particular you know? the the just sort of the role of the arts sure yeah i i feel like 
Well, like I was saying earlier, our relationship, we were just talking about this today. Um, when I walked down to the gardens with my, my dear friend who's downstairs and we were talking about how the artists really need the, the land-based and the plant-based people and the plant and farmer community really need the artists because we mm -hmm. kind of pollinate in different ways. And I think artists role has always been a little bit of the canary in the coal mine uh, where mm -hmm. oftentimes we're, we're, we're writing or singing or creating poetry or novels around something that feels impending, mm -hmm. where culture feels thin and tender and upsetting and, you know, can, can uh, really, I think the art really can, can highlight those, those places of discomfort and also the, the catharsis, the places of joy and beauty. Um, and, and I think obviously in, in challenging times that feels even more purposeful in a way and mm -hmm. I feel more connected to to that to that sort of dire need for for the celebratory quality and the creative quality that is uh, that is sometimes it's a little bit more nebulous than than our our rational minds can can look at. And I think that's the power of the arts as well is like right now, it's too complicated to make sense of. Sometimes mm. we need the balm of creativity, which is an ancient practice to kind of get us through hardship, you know? Well, that kind of leads me into in the album, the proceeds are gonna be going to help educate people about the benefits of the work of psychedelic and uh, the medicines that way. And, you know, it reminds me of that because, you know, with some of the artists on there, we've already talked about um, East Forest and so forth as about, you know, music being medicine. And medicine is, is in a psychedelic way, you know, it's instead of it creating an opportunity to take something away, it actually uh, allows us to get us through something. And music is a big part of those journeys often. Mm. Yeah, helping to lead people through something rather than take something away from them. Mm. Yeah, I've also felt since I'm not um, in my home country, you know, mm. I think it's been really inspiring to me to look at the research and the conversations that have come out of this film and this work uh, and really feel kind of a sense of pride around what's going on in the United States mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and abroad as well, but like where the cutting edge conversations are with, with these forms of medicine, you know, and these mm -hmm. forms of tools and resources and trauma therapy and mm -hmm. just really understanding how much access we have uh, to some really, really powerful tools of wellness and how much we need that across the board. And I felt quite proud of, you know, a lot of the communities I feel really close to in watching this film and also just knowing the underground research that is going on to put this on the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I mean, the outpouring of just like support in so many ways and the, and obviously the field is just growing like at in incredible rates right now. And, and it's interesting because you were talking about trauma and when we look, I'm actually a, a therapist and, and psychedelic therapist as well. So I'm kind of speaking to this in a, in a way that is very passionate for me. When you look at artists, um, it hasn't been, um, the arts and artists haven't been a population that has been well um, respected or cared for. Or valued so many ways that for their energy, and there's a lot of trauma that I know that the different artists have talked about um, that they've, you know, that they work with in being able to work with their music. Are you familiar with any of that in what you see? In the in, I mean, I've worked for a lot of my sort of side project work has been around. Um, wellness and radical healing and trauma therapy and we've done a lot of work in in we've done some work in prison uh, restoration and we've played some concerts in, in prison work but like I said we've also worked really really closely with a lot of radical healers you know and just 
understanding at a baseline, a lot of modern people have uh, symptoms of trauma, symptoms of depression, symptoms of adrenal fatigue, you know, and that's, that's unfortunately a really common template. And I think uh, Rising Appalachia is, is very committed to our music being in service to the collective good and understanding how to kind of weave it into a lot of different healing and radical therapy modalities and understanding a lot of people are doing that work and, and how inspiring it is to, to kind of collaborate with, with specialists and, and, and medicine keepers and tradition holders and trauma therapists. And so it's, it's like a side love of ours. Um, mm. You know, we're, we never set out to be rock stars in any capacity. In fact, the, the lifestyle of touring is exhausting and has been really hard for us. But I think the, the relationship between art and healing and, uh, and just all the conversations around catharsis uh, have been really what have continued bringing us to the table, you know, and, and committing to, to the work. Yeah. And you and your sister are both uh, big activists in many different ways. Is that right? Yeah, I'm really the whole band. We're a six piece. And, and yeah. somehow every one of us has come into the project with our own uh, leaning around service, you know, I think is the word I would use. So our, our guitar player has done a lot uh, in the permaculture and rewilding movement. Our yeah. Drummer has uh, done a lot of work around natural building and a lot around youth education. And everyone in the project has their own relationship with uh, uh, trying to spin this top of a world in a different direction. And I think that's what's kept us together because there's no big rock star ego in the project. We're all like, how can we stick with a bigger mission here, you know? Yeah. And there's, you know, one of the things that uh, in a conversation earlier today that people were having uh, about this period of time, somebody brought up the idea of, of activism because they use the word activism and the anger that's coming up yeah. in people. Yeah. And how do you how do you navigate that in the way that you bring things into the world? Yeah. You know, I think everything has a chapter. And I was a young, angry activist also. You know, I had that chapter. I, I was frontline protesting and painting signs and, and, and angry and hostile. And we wrote songs that were aggressive. And that was a chapter. And in, in a way, it was an empowering chapter in, in its own right. So, you know, I think it's important to hold space for anger. And I also feel like personally and, and also in this time frame, I'm I am overwhelmed as well by the amount of aggression and the amount of hostility. Uh, and I think for me and for our project, we have decided and 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 it's been our own arc of many, many years of touring and many years of of walking the line of activism, you know, that we want to be a solution based project. And that's our choice. And other people take other routes and that we have worked really hard to not be thrown off of our mission or off of our course by, um, by a lot of the different heated moments and, 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 and hostile debates and just held a strong center that we want to provide solutions and that that's the route we're going to take and do everything we can to have those conversations, to hold those spaces and to not necessarily enter the fight with aggression, but enter it with solutions. And that has been, um, that has been really rewarding for us. And I think also has allowed us a way to have a voice in activist movements without feeling like we get torn uh, in all the directions that you can get torn. Um, and that doesn't mean that it's worked for everybody or that, or that all of our community has been able to align with all of the stances that we've taken, but that has been our tool, you know, and it's worked for, for us to stay at the table. Uh, we have just decided collectively, no matter where it goes, we are going to try and use our platform to highlight solutions, especially because the media is 
full of the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst. Mm -hmm. And so we need places where we can find solutions and we need people that we can depend on to show them. So we, we try and, and use our space, our voice and our platform to, to find pro projects and, and inspiring people and communities that are bringing solutions, however small or large, and talk about those, you know, and write about those and sing about those. And that leads us into the song, your second song, Mm -hmm. uh, of the album, which we're going to uh, go to, uh, called Resilient. Yeah. You know, it's it, the album is doing so well out there, and it. I really do think that one of the things that people find just so powerful is how the songs come together, and it kind of just reminds me of nature itself, like it in the mycorrhizal um, mushrooms and mycelium that need each other and that pull from each other. And there's so much. Of one. I'm grateful that you joined the album, um, and that was your sister, right? Yeah, that's my beautiful sister. I have not seen her in so long. And we've just been doing those collaborative Zoom songs, which is the new the new way. It's cool to be able to make music together, but we miss each other a lot. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of the album. And have a great time um, in Let's See What We Can Create. Thank, thank you so you. much for your work you. and bringing our music in and for all the powerful research and, and radical plant people that are coming to the forefront and really coming, I think, to this planet's rescue. So 
Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you. Yay.